Hey beautiful people, it's Mizko here. Hwa! Today I'm going to hwa -ha show you guys 14 advanced ways to design much faster in Figma. So let's get hwa right into it. So if you take a look here, I have gone through, uh, gone ahead and redesigned Amazon's terrible category page. So here you can see this is Amazon's extremely ugly, uh, but it makes them a lot of money category page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna walk you guys through 14 ways to improve your efficiency uh, process in Figma. So 14 steps, let's get right into it. So the very first thing to design faster in Figma is to have a design system. So if I actually show you, this is all responsive, right? It's all responsive, all juicy. This only took me around 10 minutes to do. And the reason why is because I've got a design system. So if you head into assets, you can see I have attached and connected my own design system for this project. And I have a design system that is scaled out for all projects that I work on. So if you see here, I've actually duplicated the design system and I've called it the YouTube design system. I've got colors, topography, spacing, grids, and my team have actually created this so we can use it for every single project. And we haven't bloated it up with like a thousand or like 5,000 components. It's everything that you need that's critical and core to every component, sorry, every project, and you just build on top of it because every project is going to be different. You don't need like a thousand, like you don't need 10,000 components. You just need the most important ones and they're actually well thought through. So even for topography, a lot of you guys have questions about topography. We've got, we've actually fleshed this out. So we've got displays, we've got subheadings now, headings, paragraphs, it's all done. So when I'm designing, as you can see here, look at the right panel over here, Paragraphs, I've got everything you are pulling through from the design system. Everything is through the design system and also our color system as well. Nothing, even the buttons, everything is componentized. So use a design system. And if you're lazy or if you're new to UI design or if you're like a senior that just like, just needs a design system that's really efficient, I've actually left a link in the description below. It's not free because a lot of time and effort has been put into this design system. If you wanna buy the design system that I've created with my team, then feel free to click on the link. There is also a coupon code for you special YouTube uh, audience. It expires on Friday. This is currently the pre-sale period. So, so if you put in your email now until Friday, you will get $10 off this design system. And don't worry, you won't get billed until Friday as well when I actually launch the product. So feel free to check it out. So that's the very first tip to improve your design system and actually use it on all your design projects. Second one is plan ahead, guys. So many designers I know and I can see, they go straight into Figma to design. When I task myself to redesign Amazon's uh, category page, even though I've been in the industry for like nearly 15 years, I still sketch terrible sketches on paper to get my ideas down on paper first. So when I go into Figma, I know exactly what I need to design and I can get straight into it. Now, also when you're planning ahead, nowadays you also need to think about interactions with the prototype for scalability, like responsiveness, like what will scale. So as you can see with Amazon's website, their search bar will scale. So if you take a look at here, um, let me scale this out for you you notice that they keep their search bar centered and it's and that's the only thing that's centered, uh, uh, sorry, scalable. Now, that's how I've maintained their system over here as well. And this is really beneficial when you're thinking down on paper because I knew for a fact when I went into Figma, when I'm designing, structuring my elements, my components, my auto layouts, I knew exactly what I needed to do so I don't create messy files as well. So always learn to plan and think on paper. Oh, by the way, guys, if you find value, only if you find value in these videos and it helps you become a better designer, make sure to gently smash that like button. All right guys, back to the video. Uh, the third really efficient tip is, I know a lot of you guys are designing UI design and you will work with a lot of images. Now, for example, the general process is you'll design some sort of like component, like this card, and then once you've done that, you'll just Command D, Command D, Command D, and you'll like duplicate it, and then you'll, you'll need to put some images inside. So a great way to simplify this process is to simply click on your image, hit Command Shift K on your keyboard or Control Shift K if you're on a PC and select the images that you want and hit open. Now, there is a little trick here. So what Figma has done is that depending on which photo you select last, that will actually be the first photo that they place. 
So let me explain to you what I mean. So four, three, two, one. Because one is the last photo I just selected, this will now become the first photo that will go down. So one, two, three, four. Whoops, I uh, think I went into the wrong actual folder. But um, anyways, now if I wanted to illustrate that again for you guys, if I went one, two, three, oh, sorry, one, two, three, four, and I hit open, bang, 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 then I'm giving you a reverse blow kiss and no one gives a reverse blow kiss. So you wanna make sure that you go from last to first. Now, the fourth thing is frames over groups. Now, I know you guys probably know about frames and groups, but a lot of you guys probably also don't know about frames and groups. So when we have a sort of a group of elements on a UI design page, um, I think it's really easy for us to fall into the trap of using groups because we resonate with that terminology. I just want a group of items, so I'm gonna put it into a group. Now, to help you illustrate this analogy, I'm gonna ask you guys, do you know who this person is? If you don't, this is Jeff Bezos. He is the founder and also former CEO of Amazon. Now, over on the right-hand side, I have actually done a extremely beautiful portrait of Jeff Bezos himself. Now, to illustrate this analogy, I've got the portrait inside a group and then a portrait inside a frame. So, what's the difference here? Now, the group is actually a, will be created by the group of elements inside and on the frame, the group of elements inside are independent of the actual frame itself. So let me help you illustrate this. Now, if I wanna make this face smaller, right? And if I click on this group, you can see that the group will automatically adjust based on the components, the little, the elements inside. So there is a relationship between the two. Now, if I made the face inside the frame smaller, you'll notice that the frame stays as is and the components and the elements inside are, uh, are independent of the actual bounding box or the frame. So you're probably thinking, I get that, but how does that apply to UI design? So let, let, before I jump into that, when you should use groups and when you should use frames. Groups are great for if you're designing a very basic logo or a simple illustration inside Figma, that's great. Just group those elements together, jumble it all up and you're good to go. But when you're doing UI design, it gets quite complicated, right? Because you need to think about responsiveness, you need to think about scalability. And if you take a look at my header over here, which is a very standard component, what you wanna do is when you're designing, you wanna be, able, you wanna be sure to think about how this is, will scale for larger desktops, for smaller viewports. You, you gotta think about all that. And if, you, if, this was, if this header was inside a group, because the group will scale accordingly to everything inside, it won't allow you to create this responsiveness. Now, let me explain it to you. So if I made this frame a group, whoops, let me just make this a group. As you can see here, group two, and I'm gonna move these elements inside the group and take it outside the frame. And if I reduce this, you will notice that it breaks. And I think that's all you really need to understand, that groups just don't scale for UI elements. And because that because Figma just hasn't created groups for this purpose. Now, Figma realizes that with UI design, we do need to think about scalability, we need to think about how things will scale up and down, and we need to create, we'll allow this relationship to happen. So if you put all the elements inside a frame, then because the frame is independent of the elements inside, if I scale this, this will work perfectly because I can define how I want to position everything inside as well. Now, I don't wanna to go too deep into this. I have an entire video about auto layouts and constraints. If you simply check that video above and you'll learn a little bit more about it. So the next thing is about frames and rectangles. Now, I don't even remember when the last time I used the rectangle tool. Now, I know a lot of people actually use the rectangle tool to potentially create a button. So they might go, here's a button. I might put some text in here and then I might group this as well. So these are like, this is sinful. This is like blasphemy. I would never use, I'd create a button like this. Um, and I did at the start. But the reason why you should use frames over rectangles is that frames pretty much have the exact same characteristics as a rectangle. 
unless you're doing some sort of like logo design where you need a rectangle, a frame is just gonna do everything just it, as, it, uh, as a rectangle, but even with less layers. So if you take a look at this button I've created over here, I've only got a frame and then an icon inside and I add a background color on this frame. So you can see there's a background color on the frame. I don't need to, if I was to create a button with a rectangle, I will need to have a group and then I need to have some text inside and then I need a rectangle for the background color. So don't use rectangles, avoid using rectangles. You really don't need to use rectangles at all. So use frames. Then we have this issue where you're working, you're clicking around and you might realize that all your files and layers are like so disorganized, everything's opened and closed. What I like to do is simply hit option and you can collapse all the children uh, folders, frames, everything inside and then you can sort of tidy up all your layers. So if I hit option close, 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 everything's closed. If I hit option and open, it'll open everything as well. So normally once I've gone through my designs and I've like destroyed the layers panel, then I will just clean it up with the option click. Now, another quick way is when I'm actually going through and cleaning this up, I might realize I need to have a duplicate over here, sub navigation. I might just hit command R or control R on a windows and I can quickly sort of uh, rename that file. So that's another quick tip to save you a couple of hours as well. Now the next tip is auto layout, literally everything. If you notice, if you take a look at my layers panel, count how many auto layouts I actually have. Everything is an auto layout. And you're probably thinking, why do I need so many different uh, auto layouts? Well, if you take a look at the scalability of this design, I can add as many navigation links as I want without dealing with any spacing issues. I can also jump into the sidebar and I can add as many links as I want without any scaling issues. I can also jump into here and add as many items without any scaling issues. Auto layout is the perfect way, and I have another video guys about auto layout, so just gently smash that link above, for you to create scalable and well-managed design files. So make sure you use auto layouts. Now the next tip is to create invisible gaps inside your auto layout components. Sometimes you might realize when you're going to an auto layout component, you can define the spacing of like 24 and it will add spacing consistently between all the different uh, items inside. So for example, if I duplicate this, it's always 24 inside. But for some reason, sometimes you wanna create some additional space between some of the elements inside. So what you can do is actually drag and draw a rectangle and you can actually turn off the, the color, or you can make a white, whatever you want. And that is a quick hack to actually add additional spacing inside an auto layout component. So if you want to do that, that is a very quick win that you can do um, and add to your designs. Now, that is a lot of talking. My throat is actually getting a little bit dry, but let's push through. The 10th tip to help you guys improve your process is that you now, now you know how much I love working with frames. If you notice, if you start moving things out of a frame, it tends to like get pushed out. And you can see here, it gets pushed out of the frame and your layers can get disorganized. So a very quick way and a very quick hack and shortcut is to, you can click on the item that you want to move around, hold down space bar, and you can move it anywhere you want and it will always stay within the frame. That is a very quick win and it will save you so much time. And if you appreciate that, gently smash that like button guys. So hopefully that adds a little bit more efficiency to your process. Now the second last tip for you guys is calculating measurements. Now, a lot of the times, like if you guys ask me, is this header divisible by four, Ms. Co? Well, instead of having to open up the calculator and calculating it, or actually doing the maths on paper or trying to figure it out in my head, you can actually head over to your design panel and actually do maths in here. So obviously 16 is a round number, so it is divisible by four. So sometimes I actually do my taxes inside this component, in this feature right here, and I calculate all my tax deductions for the year inside this Figma feature because it is so useful. So guys, if you wanna, for example, double the header uh, height of this, you can actually do uh, times it by two, you can see it's actually times by two. So feel free to use additions, subtractions, divisions, and multiplications in that feature right there. Now, the very last tip for you guys is something that you guys have been asking about. Componentizing designs. 
Do you do it at the start? Do you do it at the end? Do you do it in the middle? Do you do it when you're asleep? Do you do it when you're at the gym? When do you do the componentization of your designs? Now, with this, it really is situational. Different teams have different processes with different disciplines and expectations. Like some devs are so pedantic, pedantic about design systems and consistency that you probably want to think about it fairly early on. Some companies don't even give a crap about design systems and consistency, right? So the best way for me and the best thing, a process that I've worked with is to, like I said before, stagger your progress and stagger your thought process. So you are managing and solving problems at the right time. What do I mean by that? For me to achieve this redesign, I had to go through three different processes. First, think on paper, document what I want to do first, then I design, and then I do the cleanup. Now, obviously, if you work more diligently, this design file won't require too much cleaning up at the end, right? If you do the planning ahead, your designs will probably be like 75% manageable and 25% cleanup. Now, no, trust me, no designers actually have a 100% clean design file uh, from uh, while they're designing. I am, if you can find anyone, I will give you 10 bucks. So feel free to, I challenge anyone uh, that can find a designer that has a perfectly designed file, no need for cleanup at the end. So generally designers will get to the end of the sprint and then they will figure out, okay, does this sidebar, is this sidebar being reutilized re in other parts of the design? Does this card get reutilized in other parts of the design as well? And then you start to clean up. You might, you might realize, oh, we have two different card designs. Maybe it's simpler to just reduce them to one. So generally at the end of the design sprint, I will clean everything up, recomponentize, just tidy up anything, spacing, annotations for the developers. Or if I need to actually go and develop it myself, then that's when I will actually think about, okay, what do I need to do? What do I need to clean up? So guys, hopefully these 14 tips you really did enjoy and it will actually really speed up your design process and make sure if you want a piece of that design system before the price ticks up, make sure to subscribe. You won't get billed until Friday until the product actually goes live. So if you want it, make sure to jump onto it or the price will go up. Guys, I will hopefully see you guys in another video and make sure if you did enjoy this video to gently, you know what it is, smash that like button guys. All right guys, I'll see you guys in another video very soon.